and he's registered there with uh, three other females. I don't know you want all their names. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, that's three other females staying there with him. Remarkably, it has been seven months since Stephen Paddock murdered 58 people and injured hundreds more in his rampage, the largest in modern American history, in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay Hotel. Now Vegas police have finally today released body cam footage from that night. mass shooting in U.S. history, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department closes its criminal investigation into 1 October. Single shooter, no conspiracy. Well, let's go to our correspondent, Jonathan Hunt, who's in our West Coast newsroom with the details of this report. It is a disappointing end to a 10-month investigation that has left us no closer to uncovering a motivation for the massacre. For ourselves, we have asked why Las Vegas police have repeatedly obstructed our questions or been outright hostile to us. Weeks ago, they refused to provide answers to basic questions. Today, they made it impossible for us to get a filming permit on public land. Why is that? We have no idea. But it tells you something interesting. Um, was that the homicide division early on was pulled off this case. Now, homicide detectives normally investigate homicides and suicides because you don't know if a suicide is actually a homicide until it's investigated. Now, homicide detectives normally investigate homicides and suicides because you don't know if a suicide is actually a homicide until it's investigated. And he's registered there with uh, three other females. I don't know if you want all their names. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, that's three other females staying there with him. Chad Jenkins is a former FBI special agent. He joins us tonight for Perspective. Chad, thanks for coming on. Why now, and what does this mean? Well, Tucker, that's a great question. We don't know why it has taken this long.
Um, I know it went through the court system, and the courts were very quick to go ahead and tell the police department that they had to release the information. I think uh, where I'm concerned is we're seeing this trend throughout local, state, federal government where there's a moral superiority um, of our government thinking that they can limit the American people what they're entitled to view and not to view. Well, it made almost no headlines, and yet a major piece of legislation was quietly signed into law a little over a week ago. President Obama signed a bill that allows the U.S. government to combat propaganda by creating its own. And that's really not to the police department's purview to make that decision. But here you have what they're saying is a single shooter crime in which the perpetrator is dead. So what could possibly be the justification for keeping anything secret in an investigation whose outcome is already known? It was something called the Countering Foreign Propaganda and Disinformation Act of 2016. Oh yes, this bill, which was on the Senate side, sponsored by Ohio Senator Rob Portman, is designed to combat what is called foreign propaganda from organizations such as RT, China's CCTV, or Iran's Press TV. Here's why Portman says the bill is necessary. Quote, surprisingly, there is currently no single U.S. governmental agency or department charged with the national level deployment, integration, and synchronization of whole government strategies to counter foreign propaganda and disinformation. Well, there is now. That bipartisan bill will establish an interagency center housed at the State Department to coordinate and synchronize counter propaganda efforts throughout the U.S. government. The bill also creates a grant program for NGOs, for think tanks, civil society, and other experts outside government who are, quote, engaged in counter propaganda related work. Now, let's be clear. This is being sold as countering propaganda, but how do you do that? After all, if government agencies put out information to the public for the sake of altering a point of view, isn't that the very definition of propaganda? In fact, that definition is this. Information, ideas, or rumors deliberately spread widely to help or harm a person, a group, a movement, an institution, a nation, etc. So this law essentially funds U.S. propaganda. But isn't that illegal? It was. But no, not anymore. Because three years ago, wrapped inside the 2013 NDAA was an amendment that removed the ban on the U.S. government creating propaganda and then showing it to U.S. citizens. That ban, by the way, had been in place since 1948. The 2013 amendment struck down a ban on domestic dissemination of propaganda material produced by the State Department and the Independent Broadcasting Board of Governors. It neutralized the smith munt Act of 1948 and the Foreign Relations Authorization Act in 1987 that had been passed to protect U.S. audiences from our own government's misinformation campaigns. And in 2013, when that bill was passed, most media said, oh, don't worry, the U.S. government will never actually create propaganda. Well, now they've created the mechanism to fund it. So what you need to know is that politicians claiming we need to fund U.S. government propaganda to protect the public from the Russians and from the Chinese. But there's a reason it was illegal for over 60 years for our government to propagandize the public, to protect the public from our own government. Reality check, right now, two out of every three Americans in the latest polls say they have little to no trust in mainstream American media because two-thirds of Americans already believe that they're not getting the truth. That number will likely only get worse with the legalized American government propaganda. So what is the solution here? Well, how about media just tells the truth, just reports facts, does not act as an arm for political parties or for government institutions? If we want to combat propaganda, both foreign and domestic, then shouldn't we just inform the public rather than trying to control their views? That's a reality check. Let's talk about it on Twitter. And he's registered there with uh, three other females. I don't know if you want all their names. Are you there? Yeah, that's three other females staying there with him. The workers on that 32nd floor, the uh, north facing uh, window, is that one broken out also? We don't need anybody else up here. We've got probably at least 10 high-powered weapons in this room. Uh, 
on the 32nd floor. I'll stand by, give me the one to sit to alert you. Whoever's on that 32nd floor, the uh, north facing uh, window, is that one broken out also? Yeah, it's moving to the 32nd floor, CB. Right here, I can't put it with direction this room there. Let me get to the window and see. Hey, hey. What do you think, Ryan? You guys, there's a window that's facing east. You'll have another broken window out that we're focusing on, uh, but we just need to make sure if you guys are in there or not because there is a little bit of movement. You guys, there's a window that's facing Sorry. east. You have another broken window out that we're focusing on, uh, but we just need to make sure if you guys are in there or not because there is a little bit of movement. It's clear. One suspect down. All officers are code four. Keep pushing. We still don't have to do a sweep for victims. Keep pushing. Get your ear. We are facing north. We are facing north. So confirming that is you guys uh, that's in the broken window that faces the left floor. We are facing the left floor. We do not have a broken window. Okay, copy. It looks like you might have another room that has a broken window that also faces the Luxor off that uh, north end. There's a little bit of movement unknown if it's going to be the curtains or not. I'm going to be working to get a better eye on it. Get your ear. We are facing north. We are facing north. So confirming that is you guys uh, that's in the broken window that faces the Luxor. We are facing the Luxor. We do not have a broken window. Okay, copy. It looks like you might have another room that has a broken window that also faces the Luxor off that uh, north end. There's a little bit of movement unknown if it's going to be the curtains or not. I'm going to be working to get a better eye on it. Okay, stand by. We've got curtains open on a window that's not broken. We're looking for broken. Okay, it is us. We have the broken window. That's us, Jared. Corey, Todd. Go ahead, Todd. If you can raise the CT. You're absolutely right. And I think in this specific instance, we see that being exploited by our government. And we see that across the board, even from my former FBI days, uh, some of the classification. I think it's, it's nonsense to have all this classification. But here you have what they're saying is a single shooter crime in which the perpetrator is dead. So what could possibly be the justification for keeping anything secret in an investigation whose outcome is already known? And then what that limits is the truth being known for the American public. And we'll never see the truth in all of the uh, information that the American public should be privy to. Of course, and it gives rise to, to suspicion and to theory, alternative theories of the case, and it makes people uh, dislike and distrust their government.